G'day everyone. Today we're gonna to cover a topic that's very special to me. We're gonna go over how to print color photographs in your home darkroom. Printing color photos from home is easy. Don't believe what you've read on the internet. For anyone who says it's hard, either hasn't done it properly or they've just had bad luck. The main thing is you just want to get your method down. So when you're working in the dark, you know exactly what's happening. You know where to be um, and you won't end up stuffing up a print, which is just a complete waste of time and paper and resources. In this video, we'll go through a few different methods of how you can develop color paper in your home darkroom. A few little tidbits of what will make it easier, and then we'll run through and, and do a print and you can see just exactly what's involved. So we're gonna keep this video really simple. Um, gonna work on the assumption that you are already proficient in black and white darkroom printing, um, just so we don't jump in the deep end, skipping black and white altogether, because that's where the magic really happens. You, should really do black and white first um, before doing color. You can work in the red light, whereas in a color dark room, as soon as you pull the paper out, you've got to be in complete darkness because it'll fog your paper and ruin it. Happens a lot. So what will you need to start printing color in your own dark room? Well, the main thing is really, you want to keep the temperature of the chemistry consistent at 35 degrees, um, you want to be able to time your print as compared to black and white. Uh, the main baths are in for 45 seconds um, and they're pretty precise. You don't want to sway the side, otherwise you'll get different results and it'll be hard to really nail that print. So first things first, how are you going to develop your print? Well, here we've got three main examples of what you can use. Uh, this is a Jobo semi-automated processor, which we use in the lab for doing black and white and sheet films. You can also use it to do papers um, using a print drum. So these are also print drums here. Uh, these are just ones you rotate by yourself. I'll show you in a second. The main thing with the drum is you just want it to be able to fit your print. So this is done completely in the dark. You fit your print in pop the lid back on, and then you start your agitations. For this one, you can just click it in like that. For these drums, same thing, screw the top off, pop your print in, close it up again, um, and then roll it on a table, roll it with your hands. You just wanna keep that agitation consistent. This one's a big boy. Uh, it was a homemade one because I couldn't find a drum that would fit a large enough size. I made this one to fit 11 by 14. Um, the main one, if you're gonna go down the route of homemaking a drum, is you just wanna make a cap which can fill and then empty again while keeping a light seal. Um, that was a tricky one to figure out. If you wanna know how to do it, send me a message. I'll see if I can explain it. Now you can also use trays, uh, just as you would for doing your black and white prints. Um, the hardest thing with using a tray is because they're open, you'll be process processing your page in complete darkness through the whole three bath stage um, and keeping temperature at a consistent level is really difficult unless you have warming mats or you keep topping it up with boiling water or that's something I haven't gone down because it just seems a little bit too hard. This here is called a slot processor. Um, it's made by Nova. They're starting to get pretty rare and fragile. This one's unfortunately broken. The way these work is they've got three slots for each chemical um, and then in between them is a water bath that heats, has a thermostat in it and keeps at the right temperature. These are really good because they've got such a small uh, footprint. You can fit an 11 by 14 page in this one. Um, 
They use very little chemistry. You won't be using your chemistry out really quickly. Um, and this one also, because it's an open bath, it needs to be done in complete darkness as well. It's a little bit easier to manage though because uh, you use these tongs which the page just slips into and then you can put it in and agitate as you go. The main one is agitation. You want to keep those fresh chems flowing over your print at all times. For your home darkroom, I really recommend trying to get a drum to print with. It's a lot easier. Um, good little trick. Get yourself a cooler or just a tank, something you can put it in um, with water. Now what we used to do before we had a uh, Durst RCP is we would actually fill it with water, get your fish tank heater, pop it in the corner, get your chemicals, keep them off to the side so they're constantly at temperature. And then when you get your drum, you would just put it in and let it float and rotate it around like that. That way it just warms the drum up, keeps everything at good temp, um, and you're really set that way. Small footprint, good to go. Once you've figured out how you're going to develop your page, uh, the next thing you want is obviously some color paper. Uh, most of the stuff you'll get is Fujifilm Crystal Archive stuff. Uh, the only other maker is Kodak. They come in large bulk rolls which are used in a commercial processor. Best place to get this I've found is b and at the moment. Get a couple of boxes, um, 100 pages in a box, it'll just save you in the long run. Really the final piece, what's left is a colour enlarger, just like this one. Um, if you've already got an enlarger and it's a black and white one, that's alright. You can get yourself a set of colour filters. Uh, this is to control the colour balance, whereas in black and white we control contrast, in colour, ditch the contrast control for colour balance. Two last things, uh, these are optional but they really help. Um, a set of colour print viewing filters, I'll show you how these work when we do a print. Um, they look like this, just one for each colour, additive and subtractive. Um, and one of the main ones is a good easel that's easy to use in the dark when you can't see it. Fumbling with a page, getting fingerprints on it, trying to get it into your easel, it really sucks. Get an easy to use one, hot tip. That's it, that's the basic equipment of what you'll need to print colour in your own darkroom. Now all that's left to do is actually show you what's involved in, in printing a colour picture, so let's do that right now. I'll make this darker and dark and we'll do a print. Just finished topping up our processor so this is what we use here in the darkroom uh, this is called a Durst RCP it's an automated machine um, it was originally intended for a different process uh, this one's been re-geared so the speeds are all correct um, really simple feed your page through um, it'll go through the developer come through into the stop and then into the blicks uh, really simple, same principle for whatever method of processing you're using, uh, whether it be drum, tray or a processor like this one. What you want is 45 seconds, then into the stop bath, and then another 45 seconds in the blicks. Um, and then you wash, that's pretty much it. Really simple, really, really simple. Now, RA4 process is done at 35 degrees, so I've just topped it up, it's pretty cool. We got a little while to wait. So what I'll do, I'll show you uh, show you our darkroom. 
So this is our dark room here. Uh, this is where we'll be starting. Here with our desk and larger. So what we've got, we've got a couple of Durst 805s uh, with color heads. We use these for color and black and white printing. These two here can do 35 up to 67. Um, this one in the corner can do up to 45. We've got little digital timers, which are super handy. Um, Easy Easel, which I was saying before, this one's actually a Patterson. Um, and they're really cheap. Pick one up if you can, just for 8x10, but it makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, next step here, this is the processor. So this is the lid. That's where we chuck our print into. Once it's down, we can turn the light on because it's all light safe in there, really handy. Here, squeegee board and a squeegee. We just give it a wipe on the face to take any excess water off. Um, once it spits out of the back of the processor, we then bring it into the washer. Uh, this is an auto washer. If we turn it on a little bit, it's actually got a auto kicking valve, which will agitate um, just as the water runs through and then out again. And then when it's done in the washer, bring it over to the dryer, feed it through, get yourself a dry print, easy as that. While the dust is warming up, uh, I find a neg to print, so give me a couple of seconds. I'll find a nice neg from this mess. Learn by my mistake, everyone. Um, archive your negs well. So when you get in a dark room, it's, it's not an absolute mess trying to find them. Okay, so I've landed on this image here. Uh, this is a shot from Cradle Mountain. Uh, when I went there, a couple of years ago, uh, I took my Bronica ETRS with me. Um, it's a really lovely image. It's actually one of my favorites I've ever shot. So I can't remember if I've printed it in the dark room before. So this will be fun. We'll load it up and start doing some tests. So from here, it's the exact same as black and white. Once your neg's loaded, uh, we'll do a test strip first just to find our initial exposure and then we'll go from there. Easel set up, time is set on two seconds. I like to do my test strips on two seconds. It's just an easy time to remember. Easel set up, uh, focus is set, everything's good to go. Last thing we need to do is work on our color filter pack. So this is the main difference from black and white printing to color printing um, is the color filters. So here we've got all our values set on zero. As you get more familiar with printing, you'll find that each film stock has its different base value. Uh, I've got loaded a roll of Ektar in here. Um, we're going to start at zero and we'll just figure it out as we go. What I'm going to do it now is a test strip um, because we're printing in color. I'm going to need to turn all the lights out. So it's going to be a little length of black video. Uh, I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing as I do it and then I'm gonna flick the light on and we can see the first test strip. Okay, let's see how this goes. So what I'm doing, I'm going into the box of paper. I'm gonna grab out a test strip. Uh, I'm quite messy. I tear my test strips. Neat people like to cut them. They just waste time. So, all right, test strip going on the easel. Have a bit of card just to block some light. So I'm doing two second increments. I'll start from the first one. Two. Four. Six. Eight. Ten. 
And just the final one at 12. All right, bringing it over now and putting it in the processor. Sucks it up. Okay, lights back on. Our test strip is going through the processor now. Wait for it to come out of here and I'll show you. Here it comes out now, nice and slowly. Might just put this tray under so I can catch it. Is there anything on it? Ooh. Oh yeah, okay, we got something there. Looks like it's gonna need a bit of work. I uh, will give it a quick wash. Oh, there he is, all right, so this is it. This is what come, how it comes out. First color print, a little bit to work with. All right, chuck in the wash. Um, it's always good to give it a quick wash just to remove any blicks that might be on it um, and sort of sway the colors a bit. Once we wash it, we'll give it a quick dry as well because you'll find color prints always come out a bit bluer when they're still wet. So if you give it a dry first, you can really sort of analyze that color a bit better. So oh, there's our print. Let's pick that off. Okay, let's bring it over here. Let's see what we're working with. Alrighty, so this is what we've got. Okay, this has just come out of the dryer, so this is our first test strip. Looks okay, there's stuff to work with. Um, let me put it down here. So, this was our least exposure to our maximum exposure in two second intervals. So, if we look at it, we go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, it's sort of looking around four second area is, is best, but that's a really short exposure time. So what I'm gonna do is add an extra f-stop to our lens, uh, which will half the amount of light, which means it's gonna need double the amount of exposure time. So that'll get us around the eight second mark, which is a little bit more to work with. Um, and we can also see there's a strong color cast on it. So it's looking a bit ready magenta -y. So I'm gonna take a few points out of those um, and do another one. So first thing I'm going to do is come to the aperture. I'm just going to take that up to f16, which is going to double our amount of time. So what did I say? I said eight, didn't I? So let's change this to eight. Just let it scroll up. Uh, put the tape back on just so light doesn't escape. Now, color pack. So the main thing with the color pack is if you want to add a color, you're actually going to take it out. So, sorry, we're working opposite. We want to take out red and magenta, so we're actually going to add it in. So, magenta, let's add in. I'm going to add 30 just for fun. Let's see what happens there. Uh, yellow, now yellow and magenta make red. So if we add a little bit of yellow, it's going to bring more reddish into the magenta. So I'm going to add 20 yellow. So that should be a good amount of warmth that we're taking out. Um, and let's do another test strip. Okay, our next test strip's come out. Uh, it's looking generally a lot better to the first one. Um, thank God. It still looks a little bit red. The density looks good though. So I think I'll keep it at the eight seconds, which we've got it on now, but I'm gonna wanna take out more of that red. Now to do that, what we can do is grab one of those filters which I showed you, which is one of the handy little tidbits to have. So this is the Kodak Color Print Viewing Filter Kit. Um, it comes with all these pretty little print viewing filters. Uh, so as I said, we want to take out red. So I'm going to grab the cyan mask. And what we do is we just hold it in front of it and we look through it and we wave it up and down. And we sort of look at the mid-tones and try and find a good value to take out. So the middle's not looking too bad. What's it telling us? Got my camera. All right, it's not gonna focus. It's saying add 10 magenta and 10 yellow. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over to the enlarge head and add 10 magenta and 10 yellow. Third test strips out. Uh, just gave it a quick wash just to get off any last blicks. So you can see the difference there that 10 yellow and 10 magenta have made. 
it's starting to look pretty good. So I'm gonna run, run a whole sheet through now um, and that'll give us a, a really good indication of what the whole thing's doing. So our sh full sheet image has just been in the wash, so I'll turn that off. We'll grab it out, bring it over to the board. We'll put it next to our tests and we can see what we're working with. So, this is it, this is our final image. Looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. Our colors look accurate, exposure's consistent, everything's lined up, looks good. So you can see, this is what we started from, doing our exposures uh, to find our best one. We've then added some color filtering in to take away the uh, the warmness of the color cast. Same with this one, sort of nailed it, um, dialed it in, straight to our final. Happy days. All right, everyone, there you have it. That's our final print of Cradle Mountain in Tasmania taken uh, at New Year's 2018. I think it's one of my favorite images I've taken. I don't know, a little bit of nostalgia to it and using one of my favorite cameras, really. It's just always a good good feeling. Um, so that's it. That's really how easy color printing can be. Um, given we've got all the equipment here, uh, it makes it really easy. We're quite fortunate, actually. Um, no reason why you can't make it just as easy in your own home darkroom though. Um, we've really just scratched the surface on this. You can dive in a lot deeper. Um, there's a lot more different things that you can do with it. There's a lot of techniques I sort of skipped over just because I didn't want to make this video too long. We run workshops here at Work in Process, color printing workshops, black and white printing workshops. If you want to really dive in deeper and, and sort of have a feel, see if it's for you before you set up a darkroom. Uh, send me an email through, we'll get chatting. Uh, we can book you into a workshop when they start up again. But for now, hooray.